tight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. By BlackRifleCoffee.com. Breaking news, James. We don't ever start a podcast with breaking news. No, not, not very often. Actually, no. This one's this one is super important, and this one's for you. Oh, uh, Meghan Markle. Ah, <laughs> your fave. Your fave. You know people are actually getting freckle tattoos for Meghan Markle because of Meghan Markle? Dead serious. And that's, that's a, what I'm that's talking a about. Thing. And that is what I'm talking about. That is that bullshit. That is now a thing in Hollywood. People are getting freckled tattoos. I saw the procedure and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's kind of weird. Not to brag, but I have a bunch. Yeah, yeah, a bunch of freckles. Yeah, yeah, which oh. was not cool. So does uh, Meghan Markle. Now it's cool. People are getting tattoos. Oh, nice. The, the breaking news is this: she says she's going to raise her baby gender fluid. No. Yeah, yeah, gender fluid. Meghan has been talking to some of her friends about the birth and how she and Harry plan to raise their baby. And her exact words were fluid. She said they don't plan to raise their child. She said they plan to raise their child with a fluid approach to gender. And they won't be imposing any stereotypes, Shaves. (laughs) The fuck has happened? She's not even really pregnant. Ah, It's crazy, right? That's the other thing. How good is that? That's the other um, rumor. So here's the thing. Harry's a badass. Dude, dude, dude's legit. Uh, oh, yeah. Military. Totally. Fucking, you ever see, you know, there was one interview where. Partied. Yeah, he, one, one interview that he's in the middle of and they were, you know, some shit was going off in the background. He was like, oh, fuck. I got to go. Was, yeah. Like, some air raid and he fucking bounced, right? He had to full on go. Bounced, right? Sure. Badass. Sure. Prince. Fucking lady dies son. Right. Still has a little bit of hair left. Not for long. Yeah. But for now. Looking good, cute, nice, funny. One of the only few gingers to pull off a ginger look. Yeah. And and being surprising. Yeah. And be an attractive fellow. Yeah. Right? What is going on inside of her vagina that is making him lose all of his manhood? I mean, it is fucking insane. Telling you. Because you, if you look at the laundry list full of problems, now I'm starting to come over to your team on this one. Here, if you Thank look you. at the laundry list full of problems, right? A lot you, of people are, by the way. You got, her you. Da- you got that dad who's fucking weird of hers. Weird family. Yeah. Uh, she was, what, divorced? Divorced. 37. Look. Now, now That's she's... old as shit. She's got, she's got a... She's, she's pregnant, seven months pregnant, traveling all over the world... Going to paparazzi spots in New York City the other mm-hmm. day. Did you see that? Where, where yeah. they were having a... Tipping the paparazzi off to where she is. Yeah, for, for her baby shower. And she's having it at the Polo Lounge in New York City where it's like, look, New York City is one place you can go to escape paparazzi. You, you have to go to like one of like five places in New York City for the paparazzi to be there. That's the number one place with a bullet is the Polo Lounge where it's just like, oh, yeah. hey. Oh, yeah. Um, she you, knows what she's doing. They're moving out of the castle, going Mm -hmm. to, you know, the other place, right? Mm -hmm. That's going down as we speak. And now she's going to raise their baby gender fluid? Yeah. Oh, and he can't hunt anymore? Yeah, yeah. He's not allowed to hunt. He's not allowed to go on... uh, Hunting trips? Hunting trips that he's been going on his entire life. How good is that pussy that he's giving up his, like, all all of his shit, all of his manhood for this? Must be great. Jesus Must Christ. Must be great for, can't a, be that, freckle, for can't, a freckle or two. Can't be that great. She's divorced. Otherwise, homeboy would have held on for dear life. I don't know what his story was. I'd be yeah. curious to get that motherfucker on the right? show. Like, oh, my God. Could you imagine? I would love hey, whoa, it. I would ask him one question. Just, just open it with one question. How great was her pussy? Because it is literally changing an alpha into a fucking beta male. Yeah. Like right now in front of our eyes. Yeah. Where you're saying, uh, we're yeah. raising, we're not going to impose any stereotypes on the baby. 
What stereotype? That it's going to be a boy or a girl? Yeah. I mean, what, what the fuck? Like trucks and probably, co- you know, blue and... Oh, God. Look. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to, to go Team Jabes on this one. Thank you. <sighs> and I, I believe... You have to believe now that the other one doesn't like Williams... Prince of, is it Kate? Kate. Doesn't like her. Yes. Because I that... Do. I, I, do, I don't, right? You, you said this... Look, if to, I met to your her, credit... I'd be like... But to your credit, you said this a long time ago. Long time I, I was ago. not on that train, and I was like, ah, you just hate her because you're, you know, you hate people. Well, because I'm jealous, right? <laughs> because I almost got that part on Suits. <laughs> and how different would my life be, right? So there was a little bit of that, yeah. Could but for the a, most yeah. part, Could I was able princess. to cut, yeah, I was able to cut through that <laughs> and just be like, go down the list of all the reasons why she's the worst. And it's... It's a lot. Yeah. It's the kind of person you wouldn't want to get caught with at the at a party, right? The kind of girl you don't want to get caught talking to because it would just be like. I bet it's just a fake conversation. It's just fake and the, la- the laughs are like. She's hot. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. She's hot, but like that, that only goes so far where you're just like, all right, cool. I can't, I can't spend any fucking time talking to you. No, and she's very I, Jennifer Garner to I, me. I've said that to people, um, man, where I'm just like, I can't even listen to your conversation right now. I no. don't care how hot you are. I cannot listen to your conversation and any word that is coming out of your fucking mouth right now. Sure, I, I get it. that a lot. Can't hear it. Um, I get that a lot. The other, the other fucking banger of a story that's out today is, uh, I mean... We're just one right after another, right before we came on air. And I was like, what? I'm actually going to read this on my phone. I screenshotted it because I was like, I don't know if this is real. And then I double checked it and it's real. What? Drake is doing a residency at, in Vegas mm-hmm. uh, for like five nights. Um, I guess Wynn is celebrating their anniversary of the hotel opening or whatever it is. I, I don't, I'm not. Wynn never happened. Like, no. stop trying to make Wynn exactly. or Aria happen. <laughs> because both of those hotels were like touted as this, right? Yeah. The new Vegas. Yeah. By the way, we don't want a new Vegas. <laughs> we want a slightly cleaner old Vegas, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you hundred percent on that. I stayed at Aria, um, two trips ago. We Meh. go to, we go to Vegas a lot. Um, for work, you know, a lot of a lot of our peeps are out there. Black, there's a Black Rifle coffee shop out there. Uh, obviously, Black Rifle sponsors the Vegas Golden Knights. We have a lot of business and friends in Vegas, right? So we go a lot. I, I we had to stay there because there was a a, a dinner reservation at Mastros in there um, at Aria. Good Aria and the the Vegas Golden Knights arena them, yeah. is right behind mm-hmm. that. I truthfully, I love staying at the New York, New York now because. We, we have to go to the arena a lot. Um, yeah. It's and it's, the new it's right Imperial. behind there. It's the new Imperial. But New York, New York was sold out. So we had to go over to Aria. And it was just like, it's, it's nice. But it's, I, I feel like I'm, I'm not in Vegas there. I don't feel like I'm in Vegas. There's not very many people in there at all. I feel like a fucking ghost town in there. They but just the, missed, the restaurants and the shops the are yeah. incredible. Yeah. They're incredible. So they'll stay because of that. Because people go for that. Right. But, and that's um, why I, I was there. And like, look, the hotel as a whole, you know, the rooms are nice and all that other shit. Now, Wynn is different for me. When I walk into Wynn, I just, it, it doesn't feel right. It, like, there's something about it that just feels off. Where I'm like, uh, It's this cold. Is, it's gaudy. It's like, yeah. You feel like you're in an Armenian's house. It, that's exactly what it feels like. A hundred percent. And I just have never gotten behind Wynn. I've been twice and I'm like, I'm good. I had a one time we stayed there or, or we went to I actually I got invited to the opening. So I went to the opening and I did that whole shit. And then uh, I was just like, meh. I looked around at everybody. Everybody was ju- juiced off. And then I was like, don't, don't they have like a Lamborghini dealership? Yeah, in there yeah, yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. Where you're just, just like, yo, it's everything of like Shaw's of Sunset or yeah, like yeah, some yeah. stupid, you know, saw it's based it's based on uh, Saudi princes and what they would like. That's what I feel like that hotel is. It's fucking gaudy. It's cheesy. You, 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 it feels like an old Ed Hardy commercial. In there. I, I, don't, I just don't like it at all, right? And I had to go back there for a dinner one night, and I was just like, oh, maybe it's changed two, two years later, three years yeah. later. It hadn't. It yeah. hadn't fucking changed. Uh, it's just gotten worse. Anyways, Drake is doing a residency there. Five nights. Perfect. Uh, at Excess Nightclub. Perfect. Um, 
Here's what I know. And I, I, I double check this again. Uh, when the tickets went on sale, because I was like, huh, what, what, what is this? Um, because they're, it's labeled differently. Female general admission tickets are $40. Okay. Um, male general admission tickets are $60. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, read that off one more time. If you're a lady. <laughs> if you're a gal. $20 cheaper. To go see Drake. Why? If you're a man, he wants- it's sixty dollars. Um, you know, if you want general admission, all access for females is seventy five. Here's where things get a little crazier. For male general admission, all access, it's one twenty five. So now it's fifty dollars more if you're a dude. As you go down, cl- so what this is saying is, as you get closer and closer to Drake, right, closer mm-hmm. to the stage, if you're a dude. It's going to be about double the price because he doesn't want to see any dudes in front of him. This is very Neverland. If, if you're a lady. This is very, it's, it's got a Neverland It's half feel. price. <laughs> yeah. So that way, the closer yeah. and closer you are to Drake, uh, if you're a dude, you're going to have to pay uh, double. If you're a lady, what you're not. What the fuck, dude? Yeah. What is that about? I don't know. And this just happened right now, so I don't have any. There's no stories up about it yet. Like the, the ticket link just went on sale. I clicked it just because I just want to see how much it how much Drake tickets go for, you know, especially at a, at a week residency in Vegas. Cause Lady Gaga just went on sale and those tickets are, were astronomical. And I was right. like, fuck. Well, R Kelly did that age wise. He did, he did. Yeah. And then Michael Jackson did it yeah. too. So it's like, I get it. Yeah. You want to be closer to the people that, <laughs> that you identify with the most <laughs> that you're attracted to. <laughs> I, I so here's in, in in the world today sure. what's going on here's what I I think is probably going to happen you're probably going to have some dudes that buy t- female tickets and show up and say they identify as females or they're trans well, have fun I or mean, they're who cares? Yeah. they're in you know pre op and then what what's the security guard going to say what are you going to say to that what are you going to say to a dude who bought a female ticket and said look Tonight, I identify as a lady and I want to get a little closer to Drake because there's a lot of Drake fans. I'm not, look, I'm not even shitting on Drake, uh, his fan base. You know what I'm saying? Like, cool. There's a lot of dudes who want to, to go see Drake. Right? Yeah, so I don't, I just don't understand. Drake doesn't want a lot of dudes coming to see him is what it is. Got it. He wants the ladies in there. So... <sighs> You know, the, the last time I can remember something like this or something like to the equivalent of this would be like Keith Sweat, I guess. Like, you know, where it was just women fucking. I mean, he yeah. was up on stage stripping, essentially. Right. Whereas a Drake show is. I don't know. It's, he's like a, he's like fucking all ages, all whatever. It's strange. Yeah. Really, really strange to me. I mean, good on him, I guess, if you can pull this off. But I'm I'm sure this backlash is going to be pretty pretty severe here. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just really confused. I've never seen tickets go on sale that were that were double the price for men versus women. Yeah, yeah, I'm confused. <laughs> I'm just confused. And how do you che- how do you check that? How do you enforce it? Yeah, you're, you're buying, buying it online, online. With, a, with a with a credit card. You know, I guess it would be akin to buying you know senior citizen tickets for a matinee versus you know adult tickets where you're just like up. Oh, been there children we've tickets, all been poor yeah. enough that we've been there you know sure where well the, you know the, the guy who's ripping your ticket looks at you like uh you fucking you dirt bag if you if you're poor person. enough yeah th- that you're a garbage person who has to do this enjoy your fucking movie you loser you do, you need to, you need some escape yeah exactly <laughs> if, you, if you need to do that <laughs> we're just gonna let you have it you need a nice clean escape from whatever the fuck you're going through right now bro because if you're buying a senior citizen ticket and then printing it out at home, you know, because you couldn't roll up to the box and office like, and be like, yep, yeah, I ordered those two seniors in your hair, <laughs> like the gringo guy, graying yourself up, but like really bad. Yeah. 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 Just being like, oh, oh hey, Sonny, what's what's yeah. uh, <laughs> and the guy using all doesn't the, the care at all. Typical phrases. Yeah. Doesn't care at all. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't been to a, a movie in a theater since Cocoon. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're like, what? What? That's not, that's not a real fucking thing. <laughs> Left the ball and chain at home. 
Oh. Yeah. And then the other thing I, I woke up to was uh, Lena Dunham. Oh, God. I, my, my aunt sent me this one. She was just like, hey. Check this shit out or yeah, what? Aunt Dawn, she, she listens to the show and she's like, don't know if you saw this post by Lena Dunham, but congratulations. You know, this will be a nice little start to your day. Lena Dunham posted a picture on her Instagram in, in lingerie, mm -hmm. just legs spread all out on a bed that just said, this is the fattest I've ever been. That's all it said. It's the only thing the caption said. Oh, <laughs> and I know you hate her and I know everyone hates her. But little gems like that. Oh, I have to just, God. I have to let her have it. And I have to be like, yeah. <laughs> right? I don't want to see that shit. Nobody wants to see it. <laughs> but she knows that. <laughs> And if you see this picture She's and like, I, I'm not saying way. subscribe to her Instagram whatsoever. Cause I, I certainly don't, I'm not a fucking follower of her Instagram. How did Dawn find it? I think it's one of those things where, where people know my hatred for her. So they'll go out oh, okay. of their way to be like, Oh, Hey, here's a fun thing. Right. Or actually it was on Breibart too. Breibart posted it, but uh, yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think she sent me, an, I think it was a Breibart art article. She sent me, but either way, I got a good chuckle out of it and, yeah. uh, you know, good on Lena Dunham, I guess, but fuck, I just don't want to see it. Get it out of my face. Right. And Amy Schumer's new show, you know, about, uh, she's got a new stand up special mm -hmm. coming out about her gaining weight and being pregnant. And it's just like, uh, you know, I, I, I think she, I've never seen somebody try to torch their career so f quickly Yeah. than Amy Schumer. But she's saying all the stuff that I said. So I'm just like, whatever. Your your point of view about pregnancy right now is just not revolutionary. No. She's like, if you had a good pregnancy, I just want you to die. If you loved being pregnant, I hate you. It's right. like, yeah. Yeah. You you were saying that we've been years say ago. We've, everyone's been saying that for years. Oh. Like, you're just now getting on the train of yeah. like, what I loved is the the girl, Asian girl. That did. Do you know her name? I can look it up. Aquafina. No, she, she did two comedian, and she did. She's really funny. She did two specials, both pregnant, but didn't really make any mention of herself being pregnant. Oh, you like this chick? I actually don't know her. Yeah, she, yeah. I mean, she's good. I don't you've think she's the most funny person in the yeah. world. But I love the fact that she like she went pretty much half of the show without addressing the fact that she was even pregnant, uh -huh. and just was like, yeah, like. Still got to do live your life. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, I just happen to be pregnant right now, you know? Um, so I think that was funny. The way Amy Schumer do is doing it kind of seems like she's talking about it the entire time. That's strange. Which, when you're pregnant, you feel like people care and they don't. They don't. They, no, they really don't. She can make maybe a couple jokes about it and then move on. And we'd be good. So somebody asked me the, uh, when we were out the other day, uh, somebody stopped me and was like, Hey man, I love the show. Um, uh, do you have any baby pictures? I'd like, I'd like to see your, your new child. And I was like, Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I, you know, brought him up on my phone mm -hmm. or whatever. And she was like, yeah, Jesse not, never d doesn't post any. And I go, well, Jesse also realizes that every human in the history of the world has children. And there's nobody wants to see your kid every single day doing things that you think are magical yeah. that aren't magical. And it's just like every I other baby. I should post a little bit more than I do. I understand that. It's, but not, it's not even that. Like, I, here's the thing. If, if you're not into social media, fuck it. Why, why right. do something you don't like? I know you don't really like it that much. You're a voyeur of it. You, like, you'll, you'll go on there and look at everybody's shit. Yeah, I will. I mean, I will. I like you seeing post what your own, yeah. other people are doing except right. for their kids pictures. But sure. But I just I've told you before, I get way too in my head about posting because I, I, I like watching it. But then I I also think it's so strange. Yeah. To want an audience for such mundane stuff. Yeah. And, like and going to sushi and and putting it out that like I just think that's. I still think it's so weird, but yeah. If the baby was playing again, like sure. Beethoven's unfinished yes. eighth, then, yes. then we would post that and be like, holy shit. Or if I mean, it's something like, amazing. I He's just got sent this thing about, um, cheesing your baby. So you like, you know, a piece of American cheese. Yeah. 
So your baby's sitting in like a high chair or something like that. And from you, you see how far away you can throw it and stick it on its face to the baby's face. Yeah. I, I, so yeah. I would cheese, I would cheese him maybe and like put that up because that's funny, right? It's hilarious. Is it? Yeah. It's really funny. Just slapping a, a yeah, square and it just like cheese sticks on your right baby's on their, face. And they're really confused. It doesn't hurt them. No. They're just confused. Yeah. So I like that kind of stuff. But um, I remember too when you put that rusty chainsaw in his crib and you were just like, man. But it wasn't on and like he didn't. No. Like I had those little glove, those mittens on him, you know, so he yeah. couldn't touch the blade. Right. Uh, and that was really funny. Yeah. Yeah. But again, I don't, you don't want an audience for that. That's something you keep to yourself. No, of course. And of just course. for you and your family. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the kind of picture you send to grandma. And like, you know what I mean? You, I don't want to put like, old syringes out like yeah. on, the, on the, on the carpet underneath the crib, just in case he hops out and you're like, mm-hmm. Oh, could he avoid it? Does he know better? Yeah. Like that type of thing you're into. Yeah. 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 Or I like, if he's passed out in the bed, I kind of put an empty beer bottle in his hand and like, right take pictures like that rough night or I draw a dick on his forehead. Right. And then you, or, or you call the cops and be like, yeah, this baby's broken in my house. He's drunk as shit. Yeah. Arrest him. Yeah. And I've actually given him alcohol just yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So you can smell it on his breath. What's well, Jaeger. He's being a, yeah. And he loves it. So it's, it's got a nice licorice aftertaste to it. So yeah, he really nice likes that for the, one. the police mm-hmm. love it too. Mm-hmm. The police love it too. <laughs> So other than that, yeah, I just don't. Don't post. I don't. No. I mean, I was talking to a friend because I'm going. We're going to L.A. Yes, we're going to Los so Angeles. I'm talking to my friends, whatever, and they're like, "Um, are you gonna have another kid soon?" And I was all, I "Already did." Yeah. They're like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love. Like that reaction to me was like, "Yes, I did it." <laughs> right? I managed to have two kids. And have someone not even like know a close friend of mine, someone not even know or notice like, yeah. and then the next goal is to be again, so in shape that they're like, Oh my God, you adopted two kids. You right. know what I mean? Like right. how, when did this possibly, when did you go to, when would you have the time? Iceland. Yeah. yeah. To adopt these whites. Yeah, exactly. Blonde, blue eyed children. Yeah. Same yeah. surrogate. Because they look the exact same, yep. so both I- Icelandic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that I was like, oh, I I did it. Like I scored with at least one of my close friends. Yeah, Do you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, you did. That it. were like, oh, when are you gonna have another kid? Mm. Surprise! Surprise! I already did it. I already did done. I'm already on the other side. Yeah, and you're babysitting. Yeah, get Buckle ready up. for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hope you got a pack and play. We're doing it. We're doing it. Uh, speaking of things we're doing, we're doing the sponsors right now. We always, we always just keep going. And we, well, we neglect our sponsors. So no, we later don't. on in the we show. We love them. Later on in the this show. This is the best we do time to do it. We do love them. We love uh, BlackRifleCoffee.com. Little BRCC. What do we got here? So, again, subscribe to the, the, the video show on YouTube, and you can see the, uh, the cups we're drinking out of Black Rifle. These are the new mugs. It's, I have the matte black, which I love a matte black. Yes. So I've got a matte black with the, like, mountainous Black Rifle coffee, which I love. And I've got the, uh, the Fuck Your Sensitivity And who mug. gave that to you? Your mother did, actually. Yes. Did she use the promo code? Granny D. Maybe. She sh- I hope so. New too. It's twenty percent off. If I uh, you were like revolution oh my God, I the love promo code for twenty percent off at blackriflecoffee.com. I actually wanted this cup. It's awesome. Awesome. It, it looks almost like it's that metal cup. Looks like a tin, but it's, but it's like, not. It's yeah. uh, it's 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 a uh, ceramic. Thanks, mom. Yeah. Thanks, Granny D. Um, big big fan of blackriflecoffee.com. I mean, shit, relatives even order it for me. That's how much I like the company. Yeah. Uh, they got K cups, bags. And again, sign up for the Coffee Club of the Month program. It's about $4 cheaper than Costco, and it gets delivered to your house on the same day of every month, so you know when it's coming. Love them. Uh, I'm a K-Cup guy. I uh, love the K-Cups, but uh, they get a, a ton of amazing blends, and their, their, uh, their emails once a month are always like free contests and like cool shit where you're just like, oh, fuck, that's rad. Um, you don't feel like you're being bombarded by people all goddamn day long, which is great. So go to BlackRifleCoffee.com. Use the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. Next up, we've got GhostBed.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Man, uh, we're, we're, look, we're using the same 
URL with them. We're working on, uh, I've, I've, I get a call with them, uh, the president over there next week. We're working on some Mother's Day giveaways. Um, oh, nice. so, some sheets. Um, the, those, those fucking sheets look amazing. I know. Amazing. We have some coming. Right? Yeah, yeah, they're on the way. Yeah. They're on the way. Um, ordered some, uh, ghost pillows are amazing. Um, their bundle package is still going by the way. So I, I did confirm that seven ninety nine for that's the like adjustable base and the mattress and all that shit. And fuck man. Uh, that's, that's the jam. They don't have it in California King yet, which is what we have. The witch. The, the just, base, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're working on it. They're working okay. on it. Um, but uh, they, you can take an extra 15% off if you were uh, a member of the military. Yeah. Or a first responder. And if you need to fake it, just like the senior ticket. You, I, you, I don't think you can. I don't think you, you can. You can? Okay. I don't think so. That would be fucked up. I'm man. just saying if stolen that's what Valor. you need to do yeah. to get a mattress, yeah. have fun. Yeah, if you, you don't stolen Valor Let this shit. Let you have it. Um, like, and look, all my best friends are you know, former military. Yeah. I don't, I don't even pretend that I, I even wanted to be in the military at any point in my life. No. Um, yeah. I don't even say that once. No. You're just a fucking asshole if you did, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was not that about going, but you know, asthma is in the ROTC. Yeah. No, I'm not even going to pretend to, to, to do that. So don't pretend to do it on ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Get yourself a nice mattress. Cause right now, fuck there's the, the deals are still there. So you can get a hundred dollars off, $200 off. And then an extra 15% off if you're a military or first responder. Um, these guys are really, really coming up, man. And, uh, I, and I get it. We've, we've got a mattress in every single room in our house of, of them. Uh, I love them. And I'm, I'm not going back from, from ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Thank you for continuing to, to give us all these deals because it's, it's incredible, man. Nobody else is doing this. 36 months. No interest pays you go program too, man. Beat it. Beat it, Internet. Find, find somebody to beat it. We had Casper on as a sponsor once for the other show. Yeah. Not only the, was the mattress not as good, they don't have any of these fucking deals over there. No. So, fuck them, dude. I'm, I'm ghost bed until I die. And then I become the actual ghost. Whoa. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. Love the strike force. Love, love, love the strike force. Still doing it, man. Watching the video show. Jesse's pointing to the forty pack right now. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna do. Like subscribe on YouTube. This this is what it is, by the way. I, I know I always talk about it, but like the other day, fuck, I had it mid show. I'm gonna I'm gonna have I'm gonna squirt a little on my drink right now. Actually. Do it. Boom, boom. Doing it. If you're watching the video show, this is it right here. It's a fucking tiny little tin pouch, so you can carry it on you. It's not you're not lugging around some bulky can. I just, you squeeze it in any liquid available and you're good to go. It lasts longer than five hour energy. And uh, there's no carbs or sugars in this fucking shit. Uh, I don't think, I don't even think there's any calories in it. Shit. There isn't. There's nothing. There's no. nothing in this thing. No. Uh, so it's great for diets just and all that energy. stuff. Just and energy. And, and if you're crashing. But the beauty of it is, is they have all of these great flavors that go in all of the shit, which is like, man, to me, because I'm not even front, man. I was a. I was a Red Bull a, a day guy back in the day, and I was going sugar-free Red Bull a day uh, in the afternoon, like right around crash time, and it was just like, all right, sweet. It just didn't, didn't last that long for me. Yeah. And then I was drinking, you know, a carbonated shit, and I felt like, you know, big the rest of the day. I just felt bloated. Uh, this I don't. It's great, man. Four amazing flavors, lemon, original, uh, orange, make America grape again. Uh, go to strikeforceenergy.com. They have a subscription of the month club as well, dude. And I, as well. And I, I would do it, man. We've, we've been doing it for, I don't know, two and a half years or whatever it is. I love it. I love this shit. Strikeforceenergy.com, promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. It's good forever, the rest of your lives. Last but not least, it's America's favorite, straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Mm. You rock it! Uh, sipped in your That's back. That's what happens. A sipped in your backswing. You and, sipped in my backswing. And this is what I get. No. That's what I get. No, that's what I deserve. I get what I deserve. No, not to talk in my. In your backswing. In my silence. Yeah. Shaving yeah. pregnant bushes. Don't do that. They've been doing it for 40 years there. <laughs> what? I shaving? wish I wish straightrazors.com had a, a t shirt that just said shaving pregnant bushes for forty years. I don't Work know what the it. significance of that would be, but you know, I look. I think it's great. 
a uh, big fan of it. Uh, straightrazors.com has got everything you need to be a real man in this life. Uh, beard oils, mustache waxes, conditioner, shampoos. They're straight razors or second to none. Got to get a kit. Got to get a kit. Father's Day and all that stuff, man. Everybody's uh, everybody's doing it. Somebody wrote me yesterday and said, hey, man, I've been using their Smolder beard beard oil for mm-hmm. years. And uh, they were like, dude, I'm not going back. I get it. I don't know what that scent is. But it's the that's the scent in the aftershave. Um, it's the scent in the cologne and, the, and, the, and the, the scent in the beard oil. And you can get different variations. Whatever that Smolder is, is the fucking best, man. I think they take pheromones from male tigers. Yeah. And put it right in there, huh? Yeah, I've re- read something. But sure. Yeah. Sure, so, sure, sure. So basically, it's it's right in there. Ah. And ladies just go crazy for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, they do. They do. Uh, last but not least, at, at straightrazors.com, re- promo code REVOLUTION is, is, is 20% off there. And uh, and uh, last but not least with that, I, I actually put a straight raising s- razor scene in the new book um, about shaving a gooch with a straight razor. Had to. Um, I think maybe we should drop the Tubman chapter next week, you know, as a oh, preview, yeah, as yeah, a preview yeah, to this yeah. book. It's Absolutely. number one. It's number one on Audible, um, like all of Audible. When Darkness Falls, he doesn't catch it. It's a three. What is it? Four point nine nine or three point nine nine or whatever. The, what's the highest rating? I think yeah. four four point nine nine nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're the, we're number one on all of Audible. Um, and then uh, at night she cries while he rides his seat is, is damn close. But I think we got more actors and shit in this one. We have an Oscar winner playing Tubman. Go get these books when Darkness Falls, he doesn't catch it. And uh, at night she cries while he rides his steed. They're on fucking fire. Um, and I'm super grateful for everybody who keeps ordering this shit. I know it's the craziest shit on the planet. And everybody was like, when's the third one coming? It'll be coming soon. Winter, winter or spring. And, uh, and we're amped. Jables will be back for it. And uh, it's great. It's, it's been really, really fucking fun, man. I really want to talk to you about a creepy ass story that I read last night. Please. That I don't, I don't think you would be able to last five minutes in. It was we we did a whole show one time about the, not the not, I will say it's the Halloween guy, but it wasn't the Halloween guy. It, you know that torture place, that ranch where you can go and yes. get tortured that we watched, yes. and like people, you know, what was it? The longest was like thirteen hours or something before somebody freaked yeah, out. Yeah, it was on. Somebody had a heart attack. Dark tourist. Dark was tourist. The first place that we saw it. So I'm gonna pull up this story because I read it last night and I was like, man, this is fucking crazy. Um, Microsoft has a room in one of their offices that is called the quietest room in the world. Mm-hmm. It's so eerily quiet inside that you can hear uh, your own breath you can hear your, yourself breathe um you can hear like every every single single noise that your mouth makes mm-hmm. like as you're you know just taking a just a normal gulp sure uh yeah uh you can hear everything and the reason why it so they, they spent a million 1.5 million on this uh it's called the chamber of silence and the reason why they, they built it is because that's where they fine tune all of their products like headphones uh, mouse buttons. So, so they want to hear the click. They want to hear the headphone. Okay, they want to hear. Okay, 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 they okay. need a place to test this shit out for before it goes out into mass production. Right. So they know exactly what it sounds like. And, you know, so it doesn't freak people out or whatever. But the room itself is so quiet that the record, the record that somebody's been able to spend in this room is 45 minutes. Yeah. What would mine be? Oh, yeah, 30 seconds probably. Oof. Yeah, if I made it that far. <laughs> really, 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 truly, truly. Yeah. Because I spent When a I lot read this last time, night, I yeah. was like, dude, you would never be able to make it. You would thought of that about me. Yes. Yeah, no. Because it's, they're, they're mm-hmm. calling it an isolation chamber, essentially, which I've, look, I've been in those, those tubs. And you shit love like those. That. I do. Um, this, because they, they have pictures of it, of what it is. And, and, when it, and if you're looking at the room, it's not that impressive. Where you're just like, eh, it's just kind of a janky-ass room. It looks like a bunch of weird, like, cardboard pieces and shit like that. It doesn't, there's nothing to it. It's not sexy at all. Sure. By, by any means whatsoever. <laughs> so when you walk in, you're like, it looks like, a, like an Ace Hardware store where, like, a bunch of boards are pulled out. Okay. Where you're just like, oh, that's what the fuck ever, right? Uh, there's nothing to it, but it's built specifically like that 
for to have you know to have a noise proof thing 45 minutes i wonder i when i go in these isolation chambers it's an hour long session there's a there's a couple times where i'm there was one time where i was like i got to get out of here why like what was it that made you so you you can you can hear every breath you take that is that is a sure. th- that's a thing. So like every single breath you take, a- exhale and inhale, you hear, right? I-, I didn't mind that so much. It was bubbles in the water that got me, where it was just like that was going on. Uh, your own thoughts. Yeah. If you're going through something personally, or if you're stressed, or, or you know you're too much in your head, it makes you go further into your head. And that, yeah, I, there, there was just one session I couldn't handle and I got the fuck out of there. Um, I enjoy them a lot because it, it, uh, it forces me to cut off from the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, I hate to go too fucking far down the Rogan hole because he talks about shit like this too. But I, I'm, I'm kind of getting in, into that space and I understand what he's talking about is, you know, <sighs> I've done what seven shows a week now for the last three weeks. Mm-hmm. I've, I've like the on Friday nights and you're with me. Like it's fry. I'm fried. And like, we yeah. will go to wherever we go with the kids to, you know, decompress and just like, yeah. hear madness and, and enjoy that. Right. I, these isolation chambers and shit like that, where there's no, I don't have to answer to anybody or mm-hmm. there's no lawyers fucking calling me every day or no, uh, business, deals you know potential Mm -hmm. and or otherwise or rewrites on books or scripts or whatever like with no phone i enjoy with no because there's no light either you have an option to turn the light on in there Mm -hmm. there's no light no nothing i feel like it is the it's a good clean hour where i i am checked out from the universe like nightmare no one is in there it's a nightmare and that's what i enjoy but there was one time where I, i i couldn't take it like there was too much shit going on in my mind i couldn't relax and i get the fuck out of there with this place this the the way it's described is amplified by like they were like hey if you thought one of those floating tanks is 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 bad and you can hear all your shit and think about all your thoughts they were like good luck in this goddamn place like it is too much if the if the guinness world record is 45 minutes i think I don't know, maybe 20. I would like, I'd like to say 20 to 30, but I don't know. That you could do 20 to 30? Yeah. Just through like breathing techniques, I guess. But even then, 45 minutes is a long time for something like that. Yeah, you know, I practice the ancient art of um, pushing down your feelings and <laughs> running away from constant distraction, basically, is, is how I deal with any feelings, trauma, uh, memories, anything like this, right? Right. So if you take that away from me and I'm forced to deal with it, no. Yeah. No, thank you. I think that's the allure. I need a podcast. I, I, I need a thing. Yeah, I, but I think that's the allure of DMT as well, right? That um, you what? This keeps getting bigger and bigger, by the way. I, I, do you know there's, there's, a, there's a place outside of Austin that, that everybody's going to to do it too? To do Austin, DMT, Texas. Are you like need to be supervised when you're doing it or what? Yeah, apparently. Like um, shaman shit? Yeah, yeah, but I've also heard it like Big Bear, they're doing it. Like, yeah, oh, well, I'm sure. But with a shaman and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know how that's legal on any... Right. Or where they're getting it. Or what you're paying for it or whatever, right? So Alex Jones was on Rogan, which is masterful. It's one of the best five-hour sessions you'll ever listen to. I don't know to. if I could handle. Again, <laughs> let's do the same amount of time with the silent room. <laughs> uh, the, the record is what? Making it five hours? I'd go about 20 minutes probably. <laughs> um, but anyways, they, they went down a, a, a rabbit hole, of DMT rabbit hole. Huge shock. I'm sure. Huge shock. <laughs> Minute one. But R- Rogan actually said something very interesting because Alex Jones, look, I... I, I Sandy Hook shit aside, because I don't, I don't fucking believe in that shit. And he finally admitted on that show that he believed in Sandy Hook now. Um, well, then that's even worse. I, he said he the had some misinformation or whatever, right? Okay. 
Did you, Alex? Who fucking knows? I, I don't know. <laughs> what I know is this. I find him extremely entertaining and, and, and he, he, as an entertainer. Entertaining only. We yes. do not That is not where I'm going to, to real any, news. I think yeah. there's kernels of truth in things that he says. Not regarding Sandy Hook, obviously, but um, some other shit. When, when he was talking about DMT, he's claiming that you're locking into something that's in your brain. You're going to other dimensions and other, other shit like that. Mm-hmm. Rogan's thing, which I thought was really interesting that he said, was he goes, I don't know if it is tricking your mind or if you're actually going to another dimension. Like, and he goes, I don't know what the answer is to that, right? You have. I, oh I, God! I, I asked. I asked you about this. Tell the audience what you told me. What? What, what your belief? You're not is. going to another dimension, you fucking retard. <laughs> Sorry to use that term, but I don't know what else to say about you guys. <laughs> no, you are going into other places in your mind that are not otherwise used or accessed. Yeah. Without some kind of help to chemically get you there. Right, and that's. That's no, you're says. not entering the wormhole because. <laughs> because why? You've just turned away from the microphone. I've never seen you go face down on the, on the desk with laughter. Because no, it's like frustration because. Tell me. Because I'm, I fear that you actually think this. No. So I, look, I, I'm. I have Are you the, questioning it in any way? I have the. Ex- what, yes, I am. I, I'll always question that when it. When you take DMT with a bunch everything. of other people in Big Bear with a shaman, is that the time when the wormhole opens and you actually go to the other dimension? No. I, and then if the camera that's on you guys is just <laughs> in this room and they're like, they all think they're in another dimension. Oh, we don't know. Is it on my <laughs> Fucking idiot. Here's the, here's the thing. I have I question everything because I I I'm a I have a curious mind, Jabes, and I and I that's li- great. I like to give, but I like to give each opportunity a shot. Same way with like religion, right? Yeah. I I there is ninety percent of the world, maybe greater, that believes in some form of God and religion and all that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. I, I'm not going to shoot any of it down because I don't know what's right or wrong. I really don't. The Muslim thing's fucking way off for me because it's like any religion that treats women like that or it, that says women have to do cover up and can't drive. Well, their and practices all that other shit. are horrible, but the idea of believing in some god that tells you to do things makes you do things is the same sort of Cor- correct, thing. right? So, so. W- but with all of it, right? I- I'm not going to shoot any of it down because I don't know. I've never been there, and I don't, I, I don't know. I won't know until I die. Same with the DMT thing. Is it possible that... Yeah, James. Is it possible that what? <laughs> that all of this world and all of that shit is, is bullshit. And, you know, you look at, like, dinosaurs that are millions of years old and all that other stuff, mm-hmm. like... Has this planet been here before? And then you look at, you know, you look at Mars. Was that, did it have life form before that? And then it went out. I don't know. I have no fucking idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the DMT thing about people, you know, going through the, the gates and, and all that other shit. Like, could it be? Maybe. Could it be part of another dimension? Maybe. Uh, is, it, is it just your mind being tricked because you're on drugs and hallucinogens? Maybe. But I'm not going to close myself off to either of it. What I will say is this. I'd like to try it and, and, and figure it out and give you an honest assessment. Yeah. So. Yeah. Do it. Do would it. you be cool I'd with it? to get your honest assessment. Yeah. Why not? Why, why, why do you seem so skeptical about it? Because you feel like you're going to know if you really went to another dimension or not. I think mentally, you think you'll have all the answers. I know. I don't think. I'll, I, I don't think I'll have all the answers. So but you'll I do think it. it I think and you'll it'll feel help. Like you, you. Went I think to it will help. Dimension. Of like, when you've taken drugs or done drugs or whatever, where you're like, oh man, I'm super high or done. Yeah, yeah. Whatever yeah. it is, you know that you're. You know. All right, great. I'm on this. Right. Yeah, yeah. But DMT is actually something that is is naturally released in in your brain, brain. when you feel like you're going to die. Correct. So. I don't know if you can control it and actually see what it is of, of what you think when you're going to die. Maybe I'd, I'd like to give it a go is all I'll say before I shoot and that I down. I think that's what it is. So, um, 
like I've said before, so DMT is simulating the chemical release that your brain has when you feel like you're about to die. Okay. So, so that's why I've told you before, that's why everyone has the walking through the gates, the light. So your body is this kind of amazing thing that when you are going to die, your brain makes it beautiful and easy on you and not horrible and scary, right? I, I don't know because so, you look at God and it's not heaven. It's, it's a chemical that do you, do you believe in like science with like Stephen Hawking and like uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, like the third dimensions and the holes and the stuff like that? that. That's what they've always said. Sure. Scientifically. So how do you shoot that down then? If I mean, they're the- scientific theories. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, look, Stephen Hawking is probably what one of the most brilliant minds of, Ever was yeah was yeah well R I P he's still with me um obviously, obviously. on a day to day basis um, I still post weird pictures of him on like my Instagram stories once a month just to do it to trip it's people out he's still with you <laughs> and I'll I'll just write like go to at S T James S T James like I've really fucked up Instagram but I'll just write at the top of like Stephen Hawking knows you're high in the other dimension I'll just write like weird <laughs> shit like that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, to freak people out. Yeah, but like with, with that, with, with with Stephen Hawking, like I have a hard time going against somebody like that scientifically. Where it's like, man, I, I don't know what's real. I don't know which which way to go with it. So I'd like to try it and figure it out. I wonder if I wonder if Neil's actually done it. DMT. I forget what he said. You, he you was guys on you, Rogan. So. Yeah, well, you guys, you and your mom were watching it. Yeah, I got bits and I always get bits and pieces of Rogan. I have never been able to sit down and watch like a whole. Because it's too long. It's too long and, a, and it's a too long and windy of a road, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. Because it, with, it with goes us, in all different directions and you're sort of like. Yeah. With us really jumping into video this year and doing all these shows on YouTube, everybody, you know is now converting and saying, dude, I love watching it rather than, you know, cause everybody, every TV has YouTube for free now, you know, essentially yeah. across the world. So a lot of people are watching the show now, Ross Patterson revolution and saying, Hey man, I, I enjoy watching this. Uh, I wish you guys were longer. And my point has been this, I'm with you on the Rogan stance of three hours or five hours that he went with Alex Jones. It's too long. It's just a different format. So they're able to, Talk about nothing, go on get weird high, little, get, get high, yeah. drink, see where the day takes them. Right. Um, and Which is I great. Think that's what makes that's him unique. Great. That's what but makes I'm him saying, unique. In our, our show format, yeah. um, it, doesn't, it doesn't lend us, lend itself to going like, cause, cause we are very like, um, pop culture, uh, current events and just kind of getting through the headlines and and talking about it, right? Yeah. Trying to have more of a concise situation yes. and not a weird I blab fest. Yeah, so, so, so to anybody listening or watching, our format and our time that we talk and do the show is on purpose because I think anything after that, I'm with you with this, where it's just like... I start tuning Anything out. beyond an, an hour and a half, it's just like, all right, it's, it's just kind of background noise at that point. I... I when we first started, you know, I kind of modeled more after the Mark Marin sitch of like, all right, go on an hour, hour and a half like yeah. that, that type of vibe. Rogan, God bless him that he can do it, you know, but he can. But I do much. think it's true that he gets people kind of in and out bits and pieces. And um, the uh, the podcast, when you're listening to it, I'll listen to a whole episode. Sure. You know, you're if you're doing something driving or something like yeah. this. It's kind of cool to go on that journey with him. I do find myself sometimes during his episodes uh, sort of you know, yeah. checking wrap it out, up. Wrap, wrap it up, up, or get to a point or whatever. But, um, I mean, obviously he's the king. He's the best. So I'm not going against Rogan. But his format is just different. Yeah, it is. It lends itself to just... It talking is. about bullshit. Um, I want to say I, I did get something right a few weeks ago that, that was wrong. It was we got fake news on Bryce Harper. I made Bryce Harper the revolutionary figure of the day mm-hmm. for signing the largest major league baseball contract in history with the Philadelphia Phillies. Made that call about three weeks ago because um, it was an, an article. Oh. It was fake. And uh, oh, oh. turned out last night he did sign with he the Phillies sign. record breaking contract. Just at a different time than when you said. 
three weeks later. So, okay. Uh, you're welcome. Where there's smoke, <laughs> there's fire. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know. 13 years, $330 million for Bryce Harper. The, the oddest thing about that to me was I, I did not think at all that he would sign for 13 years. He's 26 years old. You're signing a contract until you were 39 years old. No one is that good at 39 years old. Um, so Not without that's going to be a lot of dead money the last four years of that contract. Yeah. He hit 249 last year. I think he's amazing. And he's one of my, he's top two of my favorite guys to watch in the league, him and Mike Trout. Mm-hmm. Um, but Mike Trout is a beast. Uh, now, if you're setting Bryce Harper at 330, Mike Trout's new contract is probably probably might be a half, a half a billion dollars, 500 million, that's, which is insane. That's crazy. Uh, the other thing that's insane is like he's a f- diehard Phillies fan. Mike Trout grew up in New Jersey, diehard Phillies fan his whole life. He could go there and, and get the fuck out of L.A. He's never been crazy about playing in Anaheim. So it'd be those two. Oof. Oh in the God. outfield, that would be the greatest. Stop I, it. I because I love watching those guys play, man. Um, and I actually enjoy Philadelphia. I've been. I was there what three times this year. Yeah, um, I actually I don't want mind to it. Go, yeah, I want to go. It's back. getting cooler and cooler, man. And they're cleaning up that city. It's the downtown is is great, and uh, the, the new stadiums are amazing. So, fuck, Philly could be a, a hot spot um, for a long time to come. But thirteen years, oof. That is a long Jeez. time. No opt-outs and no trade clauses. So he's there for 13. Holy shit. Yeah. Okay. He's ending his life there. He's ending his career there. Or his life, either way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot of goddamn <laughs> money and time. 13 years is a record for a contract, too. Nobody's ever signed a 13-year deal. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. He said he didn't want to play anywhere else. Just wanted one contract and wanted to be done with it. Uh, hey, congratulations. I kind of like that. The but other one. Well, ugh, so here's anything the, happens, you don't like the owner. You don't like the coach. Exactly. Like, you're stuck, stuck there, there, dude. Like, that's. That's gnarly. That is gnarly to, to do that. So let me ask you this. After, after this story dropped yesterday, it was revealed that the other teams that were in it were. Uh, the San Francisco Giants had offered 10 years at 310 million. A choice to tw- I find it interesting in a choice to live in San Francisco or Philadelphia. You're choosing Philadelphia. Does and he doesn't have family or anything cuz if you did, He's got family and they're all in Vegas. So he's from Vegas originally. No, I mean wife and kids and stuff like this. Yeah, no, he doesn't have kids. I, I think he might be married now. I'm, I'm not sure. Um because might not be, but either yeah. way, either way, looking at the long term of it, has San Francisco now just become such a shithole that people don't want to live there anymore? Yeah, I, I keep hearing that over so and the over. The housing again. prices are still the same, if not more, but the like homeless problem is is real, and the, the everybody we talk to, who's, hardcore liberal yeah. left Berkeley, all of this, like it's become this really weird place that is I, I very have been there specific. in years yeah and and every uh, every friend of ours that comes back from there is always the same thing of like yeah you know we did this and this and this but there's so many homeless people and like you're just shooting up on the streets and i'm like mm-hmm. what so you have to like asians and homeless people love asians to, i love asians i'm fine we with know that you do yeah um and you have to like paying a shit ton well, not being able to drive around or park. That you have we to know like, like all these different things. Right, right, right. Together. Yeah, I look, the parking thing is real. Last time we were there, um fuck, last time I was there, I think I think I was shooting a movie. Where? San Francisco. San Francisco, yeah. I was shooting a movie in San Francisco. Uh I got a rental car because we had to drive some of our scenes were in Oakland. Um so I got a I got a rental car, but I remember parking it. Uh, it was like $75 a night where we were staying. And that was like, we, we shot that about 10 years ago. Um, it was $75 a night then. And I was like, Jesus Christ. I wasn't paying for his own production, but, um, right. and I was just starring in somebody else's movie. But uh, I, I, I did like the city though. Um, but that was again, 10 years ago. I heard it's just gotten 
fucking crazy there now. It's just going crazy. So the fact that Bryce Harper saying. No, thank you. Yeah. If you would have, if you would have asked but that question 10 years. the stadium is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. But look, <laughs> Philadelphia just got a new stadium. Right. So, but if you're, if you're looking at this 10 years ago, there's no way a guy. Would choose Philly over. No. Mm-mm. Philadelphia's changed for the better that much in 10 years. Mm-hmm. San Francisco's changed that much for the worse well, in 10 years. Well, I would say years. last time I was in Philly was probably 10 years ago, and I loved it. Really? So if it's only getting better from that, well, it you is. know, because I, like I like a cobblestone street and, like, yeah, a yeah, downtown yeah. with, yeah, you know? It's like, you can walk around and feel safe there. And it, it, Look, truthfully, the way they've done it up, it feels like New York. Yeah. Um, I it's Look, cool. the last two times, like, again, I went there three times this fall. Last two times were a blast. Um, the other one, I think it was just too short. I was in in and out and whatever. Uh, but yeah, I, good on you, Bryce. He 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 knows something that that uh, not a lot of people know, and I think that had a big effect on this decision. I would be wary. Like, I'm just trying to think with anything, even that I do. You know, because things change so much. There's so many seasons in your life, right? Yeah. So it's like. Even think about staying at a job being that's your job, whether it's office job, this, blah, 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 exactly the way it is mm-hmm. for 13 years. You just go like, fuck, you don't know what's going to happen No, in life with the people that you play with, again, with the owner, the coach. I mean, sure. Things change all the time. Yeah. That's, and I, a, I, that's, that's crazy. When we moved here, when we moved to Wilmington, North Carolina, it was, it was the same way of like, you know, we looked at a lot of different cities. This one was just beautiful, and I felt that it could grow and, and, and all of that stuff, which, which is all of that's happening. And, like, um, y- yes, your you're living and where you live has a big effect on your life. Or just your job. I'm saying he has to go to the same place with the same yeah. people. You know, not yeah. the same people, but same people in charge, same kind of thing. Right. For 13 years. And, and the people that you interact with in a city throughout your day. Yes. That's a big deal, too. So, like, if you were to walk around through all the homelessness and all that other shit in San Francisco that's going on, everybody riding birds or whatever the... <laughs> yeah, bird scooters. Yeah. Um, Suing bird because they crashed. I don't know. <laughs> Is that a thing? Yeah, it's like this new thing where... People are fucking ridiculous. Yeah, they, ridiculous. like, showed this, you know, the newest one is this lady uh, that just got on a bird and crashed. Jeez. She's in a coma. And they're like touting her picture out, but Oof. it whose fault is it? She crashed into something. You yeah, know what I'm crashed, saying? She, she didn't. It wasn't her. like yeah. I don't know how you win that one. It's not like the thing exploded, right? 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 Or anything like that. I hate that kind of shit. And I know Sam. where it comes from because it comes from this place of you need justice for something that happened to your daughter, right? You need justice from something, but yeah. it's sort of like. Where do you, you, you can't always blame someone. No. Even though you want to so bad. I know. I, I, I don't think that's not taking a... responsibility for your own actions. You paid the dollar. You got on the bird. You crashed. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Whose fault? Who's yeah. the fault? They don't say that. What are they saying? They didn't say on the scooter that you have to obey the same law. Lo- like that kind of shit. Sure. Uh, I mean, speaking, that's a whole nother conversation. speaking about being in comas, uh, Luke Perry, Dylan Stoke. McKay, uh, 90210. As soon as they announced they were going to do a reboot. Well, you know, the, the weird thing is he was all uh, it, it, yeah, it was on the day. Um, he's not a part of it. No, because he was a Riverdale, he's on Riverdale, yeah. which that show is fucking yeah. huge. People love that show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm so going to a, a few of our listeners have written in and said, hey, man, if you love like you and like teen dramas and all that other shit, give Riverdale a go. And I'm like, all right, I told you, you that. know who they signed on next year. Who? Chad Michael Murray. Oh, that's so. right. You told me. I told you to watch that show. That is not something that I will join. I'll peep you it. In. Yeah, I'll peep it. That one's a little bit too supernatural. Okay, yeah. I'll check it out. Can't but be. If Luke you will. Perry was a is a, a serious, serious regular. It was a big comeback for him. And um, I've always liked him. By the way, it was a movie he did called Eight Seconds about bull riding. That was yeah. fucking rad. He's just. I've heard. Never met him, but I've heard he's just like the nicest, best guy ever. Yeah. And I, was like I, I don't the best know guy on that set yeah. and so humble, so cool. Yeah. I don't know him. I, I've, I've actually never met him, surprisingly, but uh, that sucks to hear. He's 52. 
Yeah. How do you how do you have a stroke at fifty two? What is in what, good shape? What, 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 what is the definition of a stroke? Like what what happens? Just some kind of short circuit of a nerve and you know, something in the brain. Is that what it is? Yeah. So gotcha. it's not um yeah, it's not a heart attack or anything like this, but I'm not sure what it's there's different things that cause it where it's like a blood clot, an aneurysm, uh-huh. and a thing, whatever. But okay. it's basically just a, a, a short circuit, whatever that Fuck. means and um, whatever causes it. So that's how you can come out fine if they get, uh, you know, surgery and things in time or you come out not being able to use one side of your face, uh, face yeah. and body and you have to relearn all these things. Shit. That's awful, man. Um, yeah, look, I mean, but you can have mild strokes. You can have, you know, a little like a blip where you didn't even know you had one where they're like, oh shit, like you, you had a stroke. That's why you were feeling so weird or yeah, things like this. Same way with a heart attack. You can have one and not know. And you go into the doctor and they are like, you had a heart attack a week ago, like mild, but. Some of our, so it could be not a big deal, but it also could be a big deal. They're not saying what's going on with him. Some of the people who watch the video show ask if you if you have uh, mild strokes if, on camera. A yeah, lot. yeah. Or if I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where yeah. it's like, hey, is she okay? She's mini. It looks like she's mini stroking out. Right, and she drops into a childlike state every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> Vegetative. Yeah, yeah. I've gotten that too, and I don't know. You know. I may have, right? <laughs> you may have, Jay. I may have. I may be right now. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the craziness of a stroke. Um, that's the hilarity of strokes, right? <laughs> not funny. No. No, James. No, it's not. So uh, you need to stop laughing. I will. I will. <laughs> um, and, I'll, and I'll get to this, this last story that really fucked me up last night. I, I, again, I read a lot late at night because I have trouble going to sleep. So I'll, news is my thing to relax. You listen to murders uh, or watch murders podcasts mm, or just like a documentaries. Blanket, like a blanket that covers me at night. Mine is like I'll just read news and crazy stories. And uh, this one, man, there was a, the oldest prisoner serving life sentence to get released. Is this guy that just got released at 74 years old. Yes. Was this on one of your murder things? No, okay. but I looked it up, yeah. Because he, he murdered somebody. Uh, he stabbed somebody to death at like age 16 or 17. Oh. Uh, actually, at 17, yeah, at age 17. So he's been in jail since he was 17 years old, and they released him at 74 saying he deserved, you know, he would paid his time and he deserved a shot at life due to his age and all this other shit. I'm conflicted on that, man. If you murder somebody, how are you getting out of jail ever? Um, it's hard. Six, 16. Why he did it? 17. He was 17? Yeah. Uh, why he did it? It's a murder, or like a, um, a robbery gone bad, drugs. There's different. What if, it was, what if it was your child, though? What if it was your... Yeah. And they said, hey, we're yeah. going to give him a shot. A, a he shot. needs a little bit of life still. Yeah, yeah at 74, I'd say yeah. get fucked. It, like if it, I'll put it to you this way. If it was my child and I was still alive, mm-hmm. I'd go and cap this motherfucker yeah. the next day. Yeah, you're right. So when I read this, I was like, man. And, you know, some other people, because there was a lot of people who were, who were like, oh, yeah, it's losing in the shot in society. No. No, you don't. For stabbing somebody to death? No. No. Yeah, you're right. I think the answer is just no. It should be across the board no. And it's 17, because I was trying to think back. It's 17, because it, that was part of the other debate of this, of, oh, well, it's 17, you know. Uh, you, don't, you don't fully know what you're doing, whatever. And I was like, and I thought back to 17 years old. Yeah, I did some wild ass shit, but I knew what I was doing, and I knew if I, like what murder was and everything else. Like, I would oh, yeah. stab somebody yeah, to death? Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, I guess. You know at like eight other, years old if you're yeah. stabbing somebody to death that you're, you know, you're doing the wrong thing. I know. The only other thing is, yeah, drugs, um, upbringing, 
I, I, I get it, but like, yeah, fuck, no. man. No, you're right. You're right. Stab to death. Yeah. That's huge. It's not like shooting someone, you know, and not, no. I, it, stabbing to death is a really aggressive uh, form of murder. Yeah, crazy. So when I, I read it, I was like, man, and they were like, oh, because CNN was the one who dropped this story last night. And for, for anybody out there who says, hey, you know, you and we, you guys are slightly right or whatever you are. Um, it's not true. I mean, I read everything across the board, um, you know, CNN, Fox, all that other shit. News is news, um, you know, even though it's slanted. This one, you can't slant because it's, it's facts and whether or not you believe it's right or wrong. And, you know, CNN in the CNN article, they're like, oh, he got out and he had a steak dinner with his brother. Great. Yeah. What'd you guys use to cut that steak? A knife? You dumb fuck. Like, you know, the same knife that you, sta- you, you yeah. stab somebody to de- death with. Like, that's a hard one. I, I haven't, I haven't I seen actually, any reaction. I, yeah. um, that's what we're going to start doing, though. Yeah, because so, so the, he was, he was the so oldest juvenile little... lifer in Michigan mm. before his release. Um, two U.S. Supreme Court decisions changed uh, changed his life. There's got to be more to that story, but yeah. So, uh, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't get it, you know, because prosecutors said he, di- he didn't act out of youthful mm-hmm. immaturity when he fucking stabbed a man. Um, so, I don't know, man. That's really, f- to me, that like, no, sorry. Sorry about it. Yeah. I think, I, look, if you, if you want to take it a step further, I think the option you should have given was, hey, do you want to spend, what, what is it, 56 years in prison? Uh, or do you want to die yourself? You know? Yeah. Because yeah. I, I think that option on the table would be the one that, that you should give of like, hey, man, do you want to waste all of this taxpayer's money and time? You living in a cell for 56 years in jail with fucking horrific people. Or, or do you want to just die right now? Yeah, you, you just let want to us die know. right now. Yeah, let yeah. us know. We'll give you a lethal injection. That'll be it. Totally. I think that should be a, a decision, not a decision of, hey, man, do you want to get out and have a steak dinner with your yeah. brother at 74? Go to a ball game? You know, we're going to try to catch a game. Now, people who were released to, you know, DNA overturned shit and all of that other stuff. like Listen, that were innocent. That I, were yes. innocent. Not, not only do they deserve to get out, but they deserve money on top of it. Millions of dollars yeah, to live they don't always get, their life. Yeah. yeah. This fucking guy, like, I don't know, man. That's too much. Uh, anyways, that'll bring us to the revolutionary figure of the day. Uh, this one goes out to Jay Douglas. Uh, Jay, Jay Douglas, um, he ran a company called Anchor Bay Films. Um, it was a kind of a mini major, kind of like a, a Lionsgate back in the day. And the reason why it's significant is it's hard to start a studio. Lionsgate had a really fucking rough go of it um God, there was another one that did twilight and then lionsgate eventually acquired them um but uh it, it's really hard to start a studio and they were buying cool movies trying to make cool movies at anchor bay like weird quirky fucking you know b movies or just cool shit right. uh, across the board and uh they would always give this jay douglas would always give these movies a chance and believed he believed in like midnight movies and cult movies and things like that and yeah. how you could develop a following, um, you know, comedically or horror film wise. And all you needed to do was get them out to a broader audience, expose this type of these type of types of films to people. And then they would actually want that and enjoy that because right. there, there isn't that that is a niche that is highly underserved. The reason why I am saying he's a revolutionary figure of the day is the very first movie that I made, he bought. Um, and, uh, Anchor Bay bought it and, you know, to get my first movie made took 143 meetings, uh, four and a half years and went through every up and down and heartache and all of that other shit to get it made. Once you make a movie, then it's hard because you're like, oh fuck, I got to sell it to a studio. It's got to go somewhere. Uh, Anchor Bay bought it. Um, I, I think the movie was shot for like 650 and ended up selling for like $1.8 million. That got out around town that Anchor Bay had bought my film. And then the next movie I went to make after that, I didn't have 143 meetings. I had one. And somebody wrote a check at a lunch and for the entire budget of the film, 
slid it across the table and I made my next movie. That would not have been possible without Jay Douglas and uh, Anchor Bay Films buying the first one. So uh, I don't believe Anchor Bay is is up and running anymore, but um, uh, I wanted to give him a shout out and... Um, because it was cool, and there I, I don't know any other studios or you know many many studios like this that are even attempting to do things like that. I would have said uh, Alamo Draft House, but you know, yeah, those guys are hit and miss, and they're only doing a couple a year, and you know, it sucks because now this there is a bunch of people who want to see cool, weird, quirky, interesting movies like this, yeah. and uh, there is there's not really an outlet for them unless you make them on your own and then put them out on your own. And then try to recoup money from that because studios aren't paying for them. So they're really hard to finance. That's why you're not seeing a lot of them anymore. And uh, it was guys like this because they're not around anymore is, is why. So I wanted to give him a special shout out because uh, that, that particular film changed the direction of my life and career and all that other stuff. And uh, I just want to give him a shout out and say thank you. Um, because, that, again, no, no one at that time was doing shit like that. And it was great. Uh, Jesse, this was a fun show. Whenever they fly by like this, it's just like, oh, shit. I know. Um, red. So I uh, had a blast. Jabes. Thanks. 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 Um, we're going to be in uh, Los Angeles. LA soon. Got a couple more shows here. But... Two, two weeks. Yeah. Yep. So we'll be there in two weeks. Uh, yeah, we get some show. We get some shows here for, for a couple weeks. And then uh, just boom. Just gearing up. Uh, gear, yeah, you're real. You're real excited to go to LA. Oh. Your sunshine on my face. Yeah. Oh, you go see, outside. You see your family again. Yeah. Um. And, and by the way, when we say LA, we're not really saying LA. It's Ojai. No. So, uh, Ventura, uh, uh, yeah, Ojai. That's not even close to what LA is. No, it's so. completely different. I'll be in the belly of the beast that whole time, but you. I'll just come there. Yeah, you'll be riding. After. You'll be riding in on the beast and then just leaving, just being like, "Oh, I'm." Out yeah, of here. we'll all be there for a little bit first. Sunshine, run. You know, getting yeah. just relaxing. Because you get so to run I by the beach. That's in, your yeah. jam, yeah. 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 Do a quick eight on yeah. the beach. Yeah. Lower elevation, you know. <laughs> it's an easy cruise. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. No one does. <laughs> For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night.